So, hello everybody. My name is Andrei Onescu and I'm a senior software engineer with Adobe, working on Adobe Experience Platform on the data lake. This talk is about data processing and querying in the data lake and how it can be improved with indexes working together with Apache Iceberg, a core table format of Adobe Experience Platform. I will start by giving you an introduction to Adobe Experience Platform. What it is, what it does, who it is for. Next, we will talk about why Iceberg and the benefits of adopting it. And then we will get into the indexes and hyperspace, introducing you to its core concepts and APIs, discussing how it fits into Adobe Experience Platform. We will also look at how hyperspace works internally. We will discuss consistency and have a small demo at the end. So Adobe Experience Platform is a data platform providing real-time personalized experiences. Producers, including our customers, partners, and internal solutions send data to either a batch or a streaming interface. The type of data sent to us includes profile data, such as CRM system data, dimensional data such as product catalogs, and time series data such as clickstream data for your website. When data is sent in via batch through a bulk ingest API or through connectors, it's validated, transformed, partitioned, compressed before being written out to the data lake. Downstream consumers will be notified when data is ripe and they can then query the data from the lake. And it also can be sent over streaming using our pipeline service. That data will be validated, transformed before being made available downstream and also being forked off into the data lake. So now let's take a look at the consumers. First, we have the unified profile and unified identity services. These two combined enable the merging and stitching of user profiles over an identity graph generated from various data sources to provide a 360D view of those profiles for our customers. Next is the Experience Query Service, which is a high performance distributed SQL engine that enables customers to query their data and integrate with external BI tools. Next is Data Science Workbench, which enables data scientists to build intelligent capabilities into their user experiences using Adobe Sensei. And finally, we have Customer Journey Analytics, which provides out-of-the-box slicing and dicing of behavioral data. In AAP, we have hundreds of customers and thousands of data sets to manage, and we are growing quickly. Currently, we are ingesting about 15 terabytes each day and growing, but more interesting data points in regards to our talk are the following. The data set usually have thousands of columns. They are very wide, an average of 10 terabytes and thousands of append. They change very fast. With this in mind, let's switch to iceberg and indexes. So what is it? And why do we need this, this thing called Apache Iceberg? For those not familiar with it, Iceberg is a table format. We define a table as a collection of homogeneous rows of data that fit into a similar schema. That data of any respectable size will be spread across n number of partitions and data files. A table format gives us metadata about all those partitions and files that make up a given table. Now, what makes Iceberg so powerful for us? There are three things. First is data reliability. Through its use of multi-version concurrency control, Iceberg enables concurrent readers and writers to operate with snapshot isolation. Iceberg further adds asset support, allowing us for the first time to safely restate data in the data lake for use cases such as GDPR. In terms of reads, Iceberg design allows for query planning to be done on a single process at a constant time of one while interacting with the file system rather than the linear cost ON that we are typically familiar with. Iceberg also tracks statistics on the partition files 
and columns in your data, enabling several data skipping optimization. And finally, we have scalability. Iceberg is a lightweight library that allows us to store our metadata collocated next to data. There is no need for additional metadata service that can act as a single point of failure. This is what Adobe Experience Platform is and what Data Lake uses at the core layer. So what is missing? As the majority of databases have indexes, to improve query execution time, our data lake needs that too. Another advantage of having indexes is that we gain the possibility of trading processing cost into storage cost, which makes cost modeling easier. There are two categories of indexes, clustered and non-clustered, and the covering index that we will discuss further, it's part of the non-clustered category. Among column index store, B3 and any three index, bloom filters, etc. A covering index is an index that contains all information required to resolve the query. It completely covers the query, as its name says. And we need it because first, iceberg data skipping mechanism is inefficient in the cases where min max column stats have lots of overlaps. Second, we need it because in the case of data set with thousands of columns, Filtering out the majority to select only a couple is inefficient. And third, it leverages us to trade processing cost into storage cost. Next, we will discuss hyperspace and the support for covering indexes. As stated on the project page, hyperspace is an open source indexing system that brings index-based query acceleration to Apache Spark and big data workloads. It is a simple system that allows users to build, maintain, and leverage indexes automatically for query workload acceleration. Hyperspace comes with simple API, and we will see that API a bit later. It comes with versioning and isolation with consistency through incremental refreshes and hybrid scans, multi-language support. Currently, Hyperspace supports Scala, Python, and .NET multi-user concurrency mode, and the possibility to trade processing cost into storage cost. Microsoft is the main supporter of hyperspace. They did run the TPC benchmarks with hyperspace and the average improvements over multiple kinds of queries is two times with a maximum of 10 times. We did run our own tests for our own use cases, and we noticed 20 times better performance. Now let's get into hyperspace basic APIs. To understand the APIs, let's go through the full process of creating an index, using it, updating it, and finally disposing it. First, it is necessary to import hyperspace, and adding these two lines is enough. Then we need to instantiate it one line. To create the index, we can use the create index method against a data set, providing a name for the index and the index definition. Where index columns are the columns names used for join or filter operations and included columns are the one used for project operations. We will be able to use these specific index for queries over the ID, column projecting the name, column as exemplified with the query below. You can observe that the query is just a simple query that does not have any reference to hyperspace at all. Next, we can check how the plan will be changed to make use of the index that we just created. To do that, we use hyperspace explain method. This will output the plan without the index applied, the plan with the index applied, the selected index, and the differences between the two plans. The important change when index is applied is in the change of file scan action. As you can see in the plan with indexes, there is a file scan hyperspace specific action, while in the plan without indexes, there is an iceberg standard way of accessing data through NV2 action. 
in the indexed says use section, we can see the selected index for this given query. And in the physical operator stats, we can see that two actions were removed and one added. This shows that hyperspace improves the plan by, the, by modifying the scan step and removing any extra action that is no longer needed when the index is used. For example, without the index, there is a project action required to limit the selected number of columns. While when the index is used, that project step is no longer needed because the index already has only those columns. The explain method only shows us the changes that will be applied to the plan, but to execute them at query time, hyperspace needs to be enabled using the enable space command before executing the query. Code-wise, the queries will remain as they are, no changes required on them, making the adoption of hyperspace quite easy and non-invasive. To disable hyperspace, the disable hyperspace command can be used. The, to get insights on what indexes are available, hyperspace gives us the indexes data frame where details about the created indexes are displayed. The details are index name, the indexed in and included columns, the schema of the index, the physical location, and its state. Hyperspace has other management APIs that are very useful. To delete an index, we have the delete index command. It is a soft delete, and to restore an index, we can use the restore index command, which will bring it back. To totally get rid of a deleted index, use the vacuum index command, which will hard delete the index. The refresh index is very useful in the case of moving data sets where you need to update the index. Hyperspace does not update the index automatically. You have to do it yourself. There are three types of refreshing an index, full, incremental, and quick. The full refresh scan the whole data set and recreates the index. The incremental refresh only scans the new changes and updates the index, adding new files to the index. The quick one is just a metadata operation that is useful in the context of hybrid scans. But more about hybrid scans a bit later. If new data is coming fast and the index is refreshed very often, the number of files created in the index will grow and the index will become less efficient over time. To alleviate this issue, the optimize command can be used to modify the index files layout to minimize the number of files. Now let's understand how it works. Given a data set with ID, count, name, value, nested, columns, creating an index over ID as index column and name as included column means that a new data set will be created and stored as multiple parquet files, 200 buckets by default, on the disk containing the ID and name columns with all the values extracted from the data table. It's like a subset of the first data set. And you can see on the left, the red table on the bottom. At runtime, given the query on the right, Hyperspace will validate that the created index qualifies for the provided query and will use the index instead of the original data adding the changes that did not make into the index if there are any. This is the hybrid scan functionality that hyperspace has. It uses the index and adds on top of it only the data that was not incorporated in the index at the moment of execution. So you can see the black table on the bottom on the right side that shows how it looks like. As you can see here, the previous plan did use a scan over the iceberg table, but when the index is used, it gets changed in a hybrid file scan action that contains the index data files and the new data files. This provides consistency between data and the index. There are other more complex use cases that hyperspace efficiently covers, like data being removed, files being removed, but we won't get into the details of those modified plans because the plans are too big to be listed here. We've seen the APIs, we've seen how hyperspace work. 
Now there is an important question that we need to answer, a question related to performance and consistency. How to keep in sync the data and the index? This is a good question, but if we think about the hybrid scan functionality that hyperspace has and provides consistency, a better question would be how often should I refresh the index to be performant? And the answer to this question is depends on the ingestion pattern. How much data is ingestion, ingested, how often the schema of the data, and of course on the read side, the queries executed over the data. Hybrid scan makes possible the asynchronous write to both data and index. So neither of them gets blocked by the other. At the same time, it uses the most of the index that is already computed and adds to it only what's not covered, only what's new. Hybrid scan accommodates all use cases. Simple ones like appending new files will have a hybrid file scan. As we've previously seen, complex use cases will have a union between the index data and new data, while deletion only use cases will filter out the deleted rows. Now, let me show you a short demo on what we've covered. And after that, we will get back to the presentation. Okay, so let me increase the font a bit. So we do have here a notebook that we'll use as a demo. First cell, it's just set up of the environment. The next is a function that is a helper function that helps us create an iceberg table. It receives an iceberg table path, which is a string, a path, and a data frame. And based on that data frame, it extracts what it needs to create the iceberg table. So what is needed for an iceberg table? First, as we've seen, we have to provide a location for it. Then we need to have a schema for it, which will take it from the data frame. We use the Spark schema util converter. Then we need to provide the partitioning spec. We can provide an empty one as I did here, but we, we can go with other concepts here. Now, the next step is just to create the, the location and put the metadata there. And with DF write and format iceberg, we save the data in that location, in that iceberg table. That is what this create iceberg table helper function does. We will use it a couple of times below. The next is just setting up some uh, location and an index name. We'll use these variables uh, a bit below. As we've seen in the presentation, we import these two uh, lines of produce these two imports and instantiate the hyperspace. Not too much of a code. Now let's create an iceberg table. We'll do that. Uh, starting from a data frame, data set. So we have this simple collection of two rows or two records. Um, and we create this data frame, which is ID, count, name, value, nested, and other. And again, we will use the display command that is a helper command of this notebook to nicely display the results. So, we just created this standard Spark data frame. We can see here the schema, two integers, a few strings, and a struct. It has two rows with ID 1 and ID 2, uh, as we desired. Now, this is just a simple data frame or data set in Spark. We need to take this and make out of it an iceberg table. So we'll do this create iceberg table execution. And after this complete, we'll have an iceberg table. The next step is to read the data from the iceberg table with the data source reader, iceberg data source reader. Now iceberg has more information that us standard data frame it has information about metadata it has statistics so it is necessary for us to read 
the data again by using the iceberg format and the data source iceberg data source reader so we do that with this we just say spark read format iceberg and load it from the uh, table location so we do have the same data but in behind there are more information in this isdf data source now let's create an index on it so we just say hyperspace create index on the isdf data frame that we just made a little bit above and we have this index configuration index name it's index 01 and we want to, uh, to create the index on the id column and use the included column name this will scan the data set and extract only those columns and we'll create a data set uh, a subset of the original data data set okay with this common command we we look into the indexes data frame we see what we have so we have index 01 the index column is id the included column is name by default 200 number of buckets and the uh, structure of the index itself it contains two fields the id field and the name field as we desired now it has 200 buckets by default how hyperspace partitions the data it's bucketing by the index column but due to the fact that we have less than 200 number of buckets uh, hyperspace and i'll show you that a little bit later hyperspace will create a file for each id of the row of the data set now let's create an, uh, a query and we do a select and we select id and name and we do a search or a filter by the id and we are interested in the rows that have the id equal to two or three at this time of execution the the query is not executed here is just defined we can see the, the structure of it how it will output but it's not executed yet let's see how hyperspace will change the execution plan the spark plan on this query and it, this is similar to what we have seen in the presentation uh, the files the, the file scan is changed we have file scan hyperspace instead of scan v2 iceberg we don't see the project anymore so we do have the index used here and we do see what we already seen in the presentation uh, two steps removed and one added as expected let's now run the query as hyperspace is not enabled at this time we didn't use spark enable hyperspace so the query executes and it runs and it gives us only one record because we have one and two in the data set now let us have a look on the uh, on the sql and the plan we do have the data source v2 we do have the filter here and the project and then display method that does a collect now let's enable hyperspace and run the same query again display query is a, a, a wrapper function on top of the show command and wraps it with this nice uh, display thing so it does a collect it's an action let's have a look on this it looks a bit different right first we observe that there are two jobs right this is the the query so we do have the scan hyperspace we let us look at the details we see that number of files read two because as i said data gets partitioned but id up to 200 file 200 buckets if the number of ids is more than 200 buckets it will split by range this is an optimization for easy search in the index that's why we do see two jobs because each file should be read parallel to another one to the other one the result is the same as you can see 
as expected. Now let's do this delete index and see how it looks, how the indexes data frame looks when we delete an index. So the state changes to deleted is not hard deleted, it's just soft deleted. And if I would run in, if I run again the query, even though Apache, uh, even though hyperspace is enabled, because it's deleted, the index won't be used, so it will fall back to Spark. This is a nice functionality that, uh, even though you don't have the index, or the index doesn't qualify for your query, your flow or your process won't break; it will just fall back to to Spark. Now to delete that index, this deleted, this deleted index, right? It has a state deleted. To delete it, we would use vacuum index, and the index would disappear. Will be hard deleted from the storage, and it won't be visible in that index's data frame. But we won't do that because we need it a, a, a bit more. We will just restore it because we want to do some more stuff with it. So we do have that active state. Now let's add a record to the iceberg table. And we do that by adding a new item in the iceberg table by writing format iceberg in the location with the mode append. So now we have iceberg table with a new row. But the index, it's as it was before. Hyperspace doesn't update by itself, at least not yet. So let's read the table without hyperspace. We disabled it with disable hyperspace. So we do have the correct answer to rows, ID2 and ID3 are returned. Now, if we enable hyperspace, we will have the same result, but I didn't show you this, but this one, it's just spark. Sorry. This is just spark, right? Scan filter project. While the last one, it's hyperspace scan and it has number files read three. So let me show you what those files are. I do have this helper function that extracts the files from the query plan. And we can see that we do have a file that comes from the index 01 version zero. We do have another files that come from index 01 version zero. And the third file is from the data set itself. So here we have an in-memory file index that uses these three files. This is the hybrid scan. This is the hybrid scan for append. Now what we will do, we will refresh the index. So this will rescan the data and recreate the index. We, would, we can use the incremental, but let's use this because it's a small data set and it will run faster and better. OK, it, the work is done. Now let's run the same query again. Hyperspace is enabled. We do see these two jobs. And if we look in the query in the SQL, we can see hyperspace, uh, scan hyperspace with three files. But let's look where those three files come from. So first it's in index 01 B1, because we refresh the index, now it has a new version. The second file is v1. The third file is also index 01 v1. So all the files are now uh, taken into account from the um, index, and the original data frame is not used anymore at all. So no hybrids come here because it 
the index is complete. Now let's do a join. Let's let's create another iceberg table and do a join between the two table and see how hyperspace does the work. So we do have this table two on the IS2 location and with an index name index 02. Now the data set or the iceberg table that we want to create contains three fields. One is the ID that will be linked to the other ID. Then we have an age and we have a location. We'll create an iceberg table and read this new iceberg table into the ISDF DOI2 data frame. And then we we'll proceed doing another index. Okay, so this is it. We created an iceberg table with these three rows. Now we have to create the index and we do by executing create index on isdf2 data frame with the index config uh, with the name index 02 and with definition index column id and uh, included column location. Okay, now if you look at the indexes data frame, we see that we have two indexes, index 01, index 02. Both have the indexed uh, column with ID and included column one name as we set and this is location. Both by default have 200 number of buckets and the schema seems similar, but it's a bit different in the name of the fields. Now, if you keep in mind that the data, the indexes are partitioned by the index column ID, right? And we do have the same number of buckets as set up and the same IDs, it will be very simple to have a fast join because the files will match one-to-one. -one. If, yeah, because, because of the bucketing, because of how the data will be grouped together in the indexes. So now let's run a, a query on the uh, query two on the second um, iceberg table. And this runs with hyperspace because we didn't disable it. So once hyperspace is enabled in your session in Spark, it will try to find indexes for all your queries. If you have indexes that match and qualifies for the query, uh, hyperspace will use those. Otherwise it will fall back to Spark. Now let's do the join. So we join the first table, ISDF, and we call it I, and we join it with IDF, with ISDF2, we call it L, and we join it on, on the column of ID. So ID equals with LID, and we want to select only these three things, and we want to search by ID, but we want all the rows that are less than three. Okay, here it is, here the join. Now in terms of how the plan looks, let, let us go to the SQL and see. So we do have this broadcast hash join. So on the left, we have the hyperspace scan, another hyperspace scan, filter on both, then a broadcast join. If we disable and run this without hyperspace, we will see something similar. But with the transformation that we expect, like we do see these data source V2Scan, filter, project again, broadcast has joined and the project and then the collect. Now, this concludes my uh, my demonstration, I'll switch back to the uh, presentation. I have just a few slides. So 
hyperspace is a new technology and it has gaps and a roadmap to close those gaps. Currently, it lacks support for nested fields. Indexing on a property of a struct type is not possible right now, but work is being done to close this gap. The release of hyperspace that I've been using in that notebook uh, did support only covering indexes, but currently hyperspace has an, it's updated and support multiple index types. And the first type that it's coming and it's present in, in hyperspace besides the covering index is data skipping index. Hyperspace works with Parquet, with open source, Delta and Iceberg, but lacks support for other file types and table formats like Avro, ORC and Hoodie. In production, Microsoft uses hyperspace in Azure Synapse, Azure HD Insight and Azure Cosmos. Uh, and now we are open for questions. Let me get to the chat. Okay, so yes, is hyperspace aware of iceberg format? Yes, it, it is. It has support for Parquet, Delta, open source Delta, and iceberg. Um, where does it store the index? The index is stored in a specified location. I can share you that. Uh, let me get back to this. Let me close this fast. So you can specify the location where, where the uh, index is stored. So by default, uh, it uses this Spark SQL Warehouse deal, right? But I appended this to it, so it would be easier. So we can put it whenever, wherever you want. You can put it, I mean, next to the data, you can put in an, um, central location, you can put it as desired. Uh, no, hyperspace doesn't currently support hoodie. How is different from Delta? Uh, Delta is a table format. It contains metadata. Hyperspace, it's only the indexing part of Delta uh, or uh, indexing part of iceberg. So it does it adds the wrapper on top of your data. Uh, there are overlaps between the hyperspace and iceberg or delta, but think about iceberg, uh, think about hyperspace as a bigger system for indexing, not specialized to, uh, to iceberg, not specialized to delta. It's something that you can get put in your uh, processes and process multiple types of uh, data sources. Um, does it manage the smaller files for indexes? Yes. Uh, if I get your question correct, your uh, ask is uh, what happens if there are multiple small files, right? Yes. It, uh, so this is a covering index presentation, what I did uh, here. So what it does, it scans all those small files and creates another data frame with 200 buckets, which it doesn't matter. I mean, if in, in your original data set, you have thousands of, or hundreds of thousands of small files or millions, it will scan, it will take a while to scan all those, but when it will create the index, it will be optimized. Now, if you update and optimize the index uh, fast, it will add new files to the index. You need to use that optimized index to put it back in a nice shape. Yeah, so if there are any question, I'm, I will gladly answer, but I think the time is up. So thank you guys for coming. I'll be keeping another session in two or three hours. It's Spark streaming stateful streaming if you are interested. Thank you guys and uh, yeah, see you later. <laughs>